Our brains can do so many extraordinary things. Recall information, make decisions, and create almost anything. But collectively, these are all just functions of the brain's potential. And they all originate from one ancestral but very forgotten ability. Pattern recognition. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Mark and I'm a pharmacist working in the UK and on this channel we explore the human ability of pattern recognition, how it shapes our perspectives, how it shapes our stories, our lives, all of our human potential. This video is going to be all about a little brief introduction to what pattern recognition is. It's a very mysterious and quite a forgotten field, as, as I mentioned. It's not really something that gets talked about, but it has been around for so many years. And this is actually quite striking just to see how forgotten this ability really is and, and how it has actually played a role in our, in our own cognitive functions. So I'm going to show you a good brief what this ability does and how it can actually be used to shape our perspectives for a brighter future. Let's get into it. So first off, what is pattern recognition? Now there are many definitions of the term pattern recognition, ranging from the psychology and also recently it's been used in a field called machine learning, where basically the machines, they learn certain algorithms and they go about by command and prompts. This is exactly what we're seeing now in the age of artificial intelligence, like we've seen with ChatGPT, with Google's Bard, Jasper, we're seeing with every kind of AI tool that is out there on the market. So let's go through some of the definitions. So I have this definition from the American Psychological Association. They define pattern recognition as the ability to recognize and identify a complex whole composed of or embedded in many separate elements. Basically, what we're taking is we're taking one big piece of information and we're identifying how this information is made up with these several elements that connect with one another and they form this common ground that is being formed right here. Most of the time, it gets triggered by a certain stimulus. We all have a stimulus that just brings back to some kind of prior knowledge that we absorbed in the past. So we all go through life absorbing all kinds of information, whether it is visual, auditory, touch, anything that our five senses can take hold of computing this analysis of what we're actually taking in as information and then when something else comes up in the form of a stimulus that brings back to this prior knowledge then we see this connection between it and that is the connection that gives us a power of it we're figuring out why it actually brought us back to this prior knowledge that we that we just absorbed and because of this i like to define pattern recognition a little bit differently i define pattern recognition as the following the cognitive ability to recognize connections between aspects of information, regardless of how related they are. Let's look at this definition for a moment. The keys are connection and relatedness. The connections are what gives it the power. It is not these aspects of information in isolation that are giving its own power. It's the connection between the two. It's as if like a new piece of information has been formed just by combining the two together. And the second keyword is relatedness, that despite how closely related they are, no matter what predetermined category they're in, or how distant they are from each other, they all have the potential to connect to one another and form this extraordinary emotion that comes out from it. But that's exactly what it brings out. It brings out so many emotions. This is why some of our memories, when they come back out to life, when we watch that nostalgic film, that's where that pattern recognition comes in and the connections themselves bring out the emotion. And it's a very extraordinary thing. It's still quite strange, but really extraordinary to how much power comes out from it. All right, next I want to talk about why our brains are so hardwired to find these patterns. In a nutshell, it is essential for our survival. It is a survival strategy. We have very unique survival instincts compared to like the other animals. We're the only mammal that can tell stories. Again, another form of pattern recognition there. When we tell a story, we connect it to a theme maybe we've discovered. Like I said, this ability is ancestral. It has been going on for hundreds of 
thousands of years and have evolved to incorporate this ability and take sense of the information surrounding us. One of my favorite creators, um, Nathaniel Drew, uh, he has a great video called How to Remember Your Life. And in that video, he talks about how stories are about perspective. This memory that we have uncovered, that we've endured so much. Some memories can bring us laughter, some bring us tears, but the memories that we have, the stories that we tell, they give us a perspective on how we see the world. We all have different resonance scales, and our pinpoint on that resonance scale that determines how we see the world. We might see it differently than others, we all have similarities and differences, and that is the beauty of storytelling, and one beautiful form of pattern recognition. And this is our aim right here when it comes to discussing about this, because now we are in the 21st century, known as the digital age. Information is so highly accessible at the speed of light. If you're looking for any kind of information, any need you want to address, it is all right there. Type it in and the answers you seek may not be within your grasp after all. But this is a blessing as well as a curse. Because of this extreme abundance of information around us, and with so many different answers that come out from it, in understanding the information, and to a deeper level, understanding our own purpose. There is so much information that is grabbing our attention. Each information is a bit like a social media channel. We're constantly trying to find what brings us fulfillment, what brings us happiness, what brings us connection right here in this digital age. And that's really the challenge of all of us. But one thing it cannot take away is that we have that ability to pattern recognize, to find meaning. There's always a chance we can rediscover our meaning or discover your meaning if you haven't found it yet. And that all comes from the connections that surround you. Getting a little bit dark in here. So I'm gonna use Ali's technique of frame transformation in the style of a clap. In three, two, one. Right, there we go. That's much better now. Now I wanna go through this study where pattern recognition is actually demonstrated in human subjects. So in the study, there were 50 sequences of images and the sequences were split. The 30 of which had repeated patterns, whereas the other 20 had no repeated patterns and all the images there were randomized. So there were three images that could appear in the sequence, a hand, a face, and a landscape. And the results showed that the reaction time decreased rapidly from the repeating sequences. It sort of started to go down as they figured out what the next image of the pattern would be. But it was more to just the mechanical aspects, like reaction time. The scientists of this wanted to find out how these human subjects got the pattern and how they actually formulated it. So using a bunch of mathematical models, they concluded with the following. So subjects calculate beliefs about each specific state or the image that's coming next in the sequence as a compound probability that takes into account both the probability of the specific structure given the observed history and the probability of each state given that structure. And the structure here is the pattern itself. Here, the beliefs about the underlying structure represent structure learning, while updating beliefs about the state of the world using the structural beliefs represents inference based on the previously learned structure. Essentially, what we're given here is that if you're given the sequence of hand, face, landscape, face, essentially what the subjects are doing, they are figuring out if the next image will be one of the three images and also looking ahead and seeing what if the pattern is going to repeat itself over time. And by using this sort of system in a way, us humans were thinking about as each image changes into the next image and we can see a pattern that can, that can go through, we're sort of looking ahead as the information updates itself. This is based on a, on a very popular mathematical thinking model known as Bayesian learning. And essentially, in this learning model, our beliefs update themselves based on the information that comes up. And out of all the, the mathematical models that the scientists used, the Bayesian thinking model was the one that best described how these human subjects figured out the patterns in the first place. Now, you might be thinking about the difference between pattern learning and probabilistic learning. Patterns can be a lot of statistics involved, and it tends to be that way. But those are two key differences 
between finding the patterns and computing probabilities. So with pattern learning, we're essentially developing rules based on what we have just learned. So if we were to actually take part in this study and figuring out what image comes next, we're finding the rule that comes in, how these images connect one another to find that rule, and if this rule is going to actually apply itself again and again. And then once we figured it, then we can find out the image much faster than, than in the first try. Whereas with probabilistic learning, this is more of a statistical analysis of the outcomes. How likely this image is going to appear on the next time. It isn't really taking into account the connection. Hence why when we're thinking patterns, we tend to think of the connections right here. All right, so now we've talked about this extraordinary ability called pattern recognition that sounds very valuable to us. Now let's see how we can actually use this to our advantage. There are patterns in almost every area of our life, whether it be some of the fun areas, whether it be some of the serious areas in work, or even some of the personal areas. I would say if you would start practicing pattern recognition, I would say find an issue that really resonates with you and list down the connections that you see. Write them down on a piece of paper. Write down to all the connections and ideas that come to mind and see how they really resonate with you. Some of the great areas that you can find it in are communication, how people talk to you, one's my favorite, music, finding connections in the pitch, the rhythm, etc. And even some statistical things, being the data of like elections or the data of fo various different forecasts. And just to end this video, I just want to say that we all have the potential to recognize patterns, but some people tend to have the unfair advantage of recognizing it better than others. But that doesn't mean that those who are a bit behind cannot recognize patterns well. We all have that potential. And this is why pattern recognition is a skill to develop. It's a valuable skill in today's digital age. I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in learning more, I appreciate if you subscribe to my email newsletter where we explore recent learnings I've discovered where our pattern recognition really does come into play. It could be from ideas from books or from stories that I've heard from many friends and family. Always be sure to like and subscribe to this channel where we explore more fascinating ideas relating to pattern recognition. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.